Hello, I'm Joseph Alpert, and uh, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the American Journal of Medicine, um, and I'm here to call your attention to a very interesting article in this month's uh, AJM. Um, the article is by Singh et al. Uh, again, uh, it's from the VA at Alabama and a number of other um, institutions. The lead author is from there. Uh, and the senior author is uh, Ali Ahmed. Uh, and uh, Ali has been in, and his group have been interested in a long time in the uh, uh, outcomes uh, with digoxin therapy, which has become much less common in heart failure. So they uh, collected a, a large number of patients who had been uh, on uh, DIG and a control group uh, matched for everything that they could come up with. Um, and then they started to look at uh, the outcomes and, and they found some interesting things. The first outcome they found was that um, in, in patients with heart failure, um, there were, uh, that is reduced ejection fraction heart failure, um, there were less uh, admissions for heart failure when the patients got DIG. When they looked at uh, the HEFPEF patients, that is the people with preserved ejection fraction, there really wasn't um, any difference uh, in this outcome of, of readmission. So, uh, and mortality wasn't affected by DIG one way or the other. Um, so uh, I, I know there's been a lot of discussion shouldn't we stop using DIG and so forth? Um, there's been a, a recent study from the Netherlands that supports the use of DIG uh, for heart rate control in patients with atrial fib. So it may be that uh, digoxin and the old foxglove is uh, going to be making a bit of a comeback. But certainly it's reassuring that there was no increased mortality um, in either the reduced ejection fraction heart failure patients or uh, the, uh, the preserved ejection fraction heart failure patients.